All right, I'm gonna keep this video short for you. I'm just gonna get right into it. What we're addressing here today are four surprisingly unhealthy, healthy foods. So foods that are kind of sneaky, ones that are marketed as healthy, but really aren't, and predominantly gearing towards sort of the fat loss or fat gain side of things. We go down a lot of rabbit holes with health topics, but these are foods that can contribute to fat gain that are really marketed as healthier options. So you're gonna wanna listen carefully. You're tuned into the internet's leading fat loss channel with new videos on Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday, but heck, we post just about every single day nowadays. Please hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications. I also want you to check out Casa's Grill down in the description below. So Casa's Grill is a really cool biodegradable portable grill. So if you're ever on the go, like you're out hunting or you're out fishing or on a boat or you're camping, anything like that, and you wanna be able to have a grill that's literally disposable, you're gonna to wanna to check them out. I met them when I was in Austin doing a TV appearance. They were on uh, right after me, so I met them. Thought it was a really cool product, so just wanted to give them a big shout out in this video. So make sure you check them out. If you are into camping, you're doing anything fun this summer and you wanna be able to use a grill where you don't have access to a grill. All right, let's go ahead and let's get right into this stuff. First one is agave. Okay, agave is marketed as low glycemic index. That's what makes everyone attracted to it. Everyone thinks, agave, I'm gonna lose a bunch of fat because it's healthy and it's low glycemic. So what that means is that it doesn't, it doesn't affect your blood glucose a whole lot. It doesn't raise your blood sugar. Well, that's because it's fructose. <laughs> so fructose doesn't affect your blood sugar, but it's still not a good carb in the sense of accumulating fat. You see, what happens is fructose stores as fat a lot easier. It goes to the liver and it gets converted into what's called activated glycerol. Activated glycerol takes the free fatty acids that are floating through our bloodstream just helping us out as nutrients and turns them into the storage form known as a triglyceride. So it takes harmless fats that are doing good things in our body and magically zaps them and turns them bad. It turns them into a storage form because it converts to activated glycerol. We have to be very careful with agave. It is, quite honestly, it's kind of a sham. They market it as low glycemic index so that people buy it thinking it's healthy, but it will make you a lot more fat. I'm just, honestly, it just has that effect. So try to avoid that. I recommend using Dolcetti, D-O-L-C-E-T-I is a decent one. I also recommend just going for stevia whenever possible uh, or monk fruit. Okay, then number two, healthy dressings. Now hear me out on this. This isn't some generic, hey, salad dressing. We think they're healthy because they're on salad. No, I'm talking about taking it another step further dressings that we think are healthy because they're marketed as healthy. Like a good example, and I hate to call out names here, but Bolt House Farms has a yogurt dressing. I fell victim to this years ago when I was overweight. Like I thought it was healthy. I used to be 280 pounds for those of you that don't know, but marketed as a yogurt dressing. So, hey, it's cultured. It's got yogurt in it. Well, when you look at the ingredients, you realize not only is yogurt for pretty far down the line on the ingredient list, but you also notice there's a bunch of carrageenan in it to stabilize and that carrageenan is extremely inflammatory. In fact, you're working on getting it outlawed in some cases, but carrageenan has been used in studies to spark inflammation. So like in studies where they need to cause inflammation to see what can reduce it. So example, like a drug study where they need to cause a bunch of inflammation and then test to see if an anti-inflammatory works. They will give a subject carrageenan to cause inflammation to then test to see if the drug will reduce it. That's how bad the stuff is get it out of there. So it doesn't matter if it's healthy or not. But the other thing is all of these things are using so soybean oil or canola oil or these low quality polyunsaturated or monounsaturated fats, mainly in the way of you know, canola based or vegetable oils like that. Here's what's wild. The Journal of Food Lipids found that up to 4.6% of fats that are found in yogurt dressings and any dressings that are on the shelf, refrigerated or not, have toxic trans fats in them. So that's the big thing is you think that a dressing is healthier because it is in the refrigerated section. It doesn't mean anything. Now, if you're on keto, dressings are fine. I'm not anti-dressing. Like get your fats in, get them in, but just be very cognizant and look at the label. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna talk about number three, and this one's gonna be a shocker to you. Egg whites that are in the carton. We think egg whites are healthy because they're lower calorie. Okay, but newsflash, the egg whites don't have much. Okay, they don't have a whole lot. The yolks have 99% of the fat. They have a lot of the protein. 
they have almost all the cholesterol, actually all the cholesterol. They have all the saturated fat, which we need for healthy myelination for the nerves to actually function. They have all the vitamins A, E, D, and K. And they have all the carotenoids. They have all the nutrients. All that we have with the egg white is a little bit of lower quality protein because it's saturated with albumin, okay? Whites contain albumin, which has a very strong histamine response. People have an allergic reaction to albumin and don't even realize it. If you eat eggs and you hold a bunch of water and you get puffy, you're having a reaction to the albumin or to the whites, not to the yolk. Okay, I usually recommend if you're going to have eggs, have a full egg, but at the very better situation, have a full egg and then maybe have a couple extra yolks. And I talk about this in a lot of my breakfast videos, but this is super important. Additionally, you have an inflammatory immunoglobulin response. Okay, the white is like the placenta. It contains a lot of the harmful things that would normally be feeding and growing a chicken, which means it has more of the hormonal activity and more of the things that can mess us up and cause inflammation in our bodies. But when you're getting egg whites from a carton, you have a ton of preservatives just to keep those egg whites the way they are. So why even bother with that? It's not healthy. Is it lower calorie? Yes, but you're filling yourself up with something that's not going to get you anywhere, especially if you're on a low carb ketogenic diet. I hate to say that, but just eat the whole egg, okay? Then number four, and this is a big one, Ezekiel bread. Why is this on my list? Mainly because it comes up all the time. Oh, I'm eating healthy because I'm using Ezekiel bread or Ezekiel English muffins. All that Ezekiel bread is, is sprouted wheat. It's sprouted grains. Okay, that's a negligible difference, a negligible step up. Basically what that means is they're a little bit easier to mechanically digest, okay, actually physically digest. Still extremely carb dense, still very high in gluten. Okay, if you're going to have a bread, try to have a gluten-free bread. And it's simply because you're still having what are called prolamins, you're still having the glutalin, and you're still having the gliadin. And the gliadin is what causes the immunoglobulin IgG or IgA response in the body. This is not good stuff. When that happens, you end up having an inflammatory reaction within your gut, which contributes to the whole leaky gut situation, which can make you feel really cruddy. People have gluten intolerances that don't even realize they do. To give you just a little bit of a case of, of understanding this, my wife has a thyroid disease. My wife was on levothyroxine thyroid medication for a number of years. She had Hashimoto, an autoimmune condition. Well, they found that when you eliminate gluten out of the body, that the gluten immune response actually stops the autoimmune response that would affect the thyroid. So therefore, her thyroid issues went away when she got rid of gluten and she didn't even know that she was having a gluten intolerance. Point is, just get rid of the gluten. But Ezekiel bread is not healthy, it's a scam because they tell you it's because it's sprouted that it's healthy. But the sprouting process doesn't help you much when you still have the inflammatory response. Okay, so in rant there. Anyhow, it breaks it down nice and simple. I thank you all for watching and please do yourself a favor and do me a favor by just being friendly here and check out Casas Grill down below. But also if you have any ideas for future videos, put them down in the comment section. See you soon.